Good evening. My name is Melissa Dan, and I proudly serve as Hill Murray's president, and I welcome you to our 51st commencement mass and ceremony. We are blessed to welcome Father Peter Williams from St. Ambrose and our Hill Murray chaplain, Father Paolo de Gennaro, to celebrate mass with us. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, O God Beyond All Praising. Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Special welcome to the graduates and their parents and many people who love you and are gathered around to celebrate this wonderful accomplishment. At these moments in life, I think you and I, with the gift of faith, are really blessed because we know the one to whom we can turn to to offer our grateful hearts. And there's so much to be grateful for. We think of the journey, we think of the many blessings. So tonight, let's just begin with a little moment of silence to kind of locate our hearts and to lift up those hearts and to offer that gratitude to the living God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, 
through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that in the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in, cust in there is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if you were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, the Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord, the Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his biding. 
The Lord has established his throne in heaven. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had to ask him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when Jesus has said this, he said to Peter, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so the past month at my parish, I have been walking closely with a family that suffered the most unimaginable loss, the loss of their son, suddenly and tragically, their brother. So you can imagine the deep grief navigating something you never expected, anticipated, or desired. They joked with me a little bit that they're discovering how many tears they have inside of them, huh? And some days it can be almost overwhelming. But what's fascinating to me, the privilege of walking with them, I find that every time I'm with them, I am fascinated. I am moved, I am inspired by their faith. Like, literally, without this living faith that I see in them and experience in them, they'd be despondent. And I would see them drifting into bitterness, but that's not what's happening. I see resilience. 
I see joy breaking through in the darkness. And I see them just leaning in to listen for God's voice as they walk this day by day, one at a time. I thought of this family during the opening hymn, O God Beyond All Praising, huh? Such a beautiful, majestic hymn, but this verse that says, Whether our tomorrows be filled with good or ill, we will triumph through our sorrows and rise to bless you still. Like, that's actually only possible unless we know God. We've experienced Him. We know His presence in our lives. So graduates, when I think of what I desire for you, and presumably your parents sitting next to you who have sacrificed so much that you could have a Catholic education, simply in a word, I would want for you faith. Not simply that you say, I know these things and I believe these things, but a faith that connects you to the source, that allows you to be seen and understood by the one who creates us, by the one who has a plan for us, the one who loves us unconditionally. Like, it changes everything. Now I realize, truly, that I'm speaking to a group of graduates who had already had to navigate things that your parents and I didn't at your age. What a two and a half years, huh? <laughs> and I imagine, I imagine, that one way or another, there's been some resilience that you've had to dig deep and find and look for the light you know, and not sink in what's not possible. And yet even there, sometimes, if we're honest, there can be scars from that resilience. Some years ago, I read this book called Tattoos on the Heart. It's a very inspiring window into the ministry of this Father Gregory Boyle, who basically set up camp in an old mission church in the poorest parts of Los Angeles. And his mission was to those who were caught in the gangs, but maybe were looking for a way out. And so he'd provide them, like, first of all, just counseling, just to heal the wounds. He would allow them to remove the tattoos from their body, even their face, huh? So that they could help them to get jobs and to to build their own life. But in working with them for many years, he had this conviction. He said that in some ways, we all kind of have tattoos on our heart. Places where we felt alone when we needed someone, misunderstood, just emotional, spiritual wounds. I don't think you get to graduation even without some of that there. And the Lord actually wants to say, it's okay. <laughs> like faith. Faith allows us to say, you know, God's, God's with me. He's guiding me. Now when I say to you, I want faith, fortunately, today's scripture readings speak very beautifully into this. The first one's interesting. All these people we don't know, Felix, Festus, Bernice. <laughs> but you know what they're talking about? They're talking about St. Paul. And this guy is causing a little bit of a, a, some issues. And did you hear how they describe that? You know what the issues are about? This is like the best description of the origin of our faith. It's about a certain man named Jesus who died, but Paul says he's alive. It is cause and conflict. It's the heart of our faith. Paul will actually write in his letter, for me, life is Christ. Like relationship with him tells me who I am. 
I don't have to lean on my own strength and my own talents and my own looks and my own how many people like me. Like, I don't, I'm not going to build a foundation on that. And when I hear that reading, I say, you know, you know, maybe they had this advantage over you and I. You know, you and I, I was blessed to be raised Catholic in a Christian environment. But sometimes in that environment, you can think you've already known it or experienced it, but you've never actually tasted the power and the goodness and how it can give you a whole new horizon for your life and for living and for your mistakes even. Like all that can be seen differently. Whereas for them, it's about this certain man, Jesus. <laughs> he died, but Paul says he's alive. And what does this look like? Well, here's our gospel. So beautiful. You know, the last time Simon Peter saw Jesus, it was before he died. And you remember what he told him? More or less, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, Jesus, if all these other 11 a week men fall away from you, I won't. <laughs> I won't. I'll die with you. He felt so confident of his own strength. And now he sees him. And you can imagine the regret and whatever else is going on in his heart. And notice that all Jesus does is look at him with great affection. And he says, do you love me? He doesn't go back and say, where were you? <laughs> you know why I think, young people, many of us don't press into our faith as the gift that it is? Because maybe we think faith is just morality. Like somehow if I live my faith, that means less of life as opposed to more. Faith is about a relationship. It's about the one who loves you and simply invites you to love him. I love how he has to ask Peter a third time. <laughs> I can really resonate there. And Peter's actually kind of hurt. And he has to make this active faith like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I knew. I thought I knew my own strength, but I don't. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. So graduates, I, uh, I think I speak for all your teachers, your parents, the gift of faith, that you'd make it your own. My life changed in college when I pressed in. And I said, I'm not going to bed at night unless I spent 15 minutes just being, reading the gospel, and listening for Jesus' voice in my life. It changed my life. I mean, I grew up Catholic. How many times have I heard these? But all of a sudden, the Lord knew what I needed. He would speak into my life, and all of a sudden, I'd go to class, and I was, I was open to things in a different way. The only way I can describe it is life went from, like, two-dimensional, you know, like everyone else's expectations on you or your own, where it got surprising. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what's going to happen today. And it's such a beautiful way to live. And this is what Jesus has for each of you. And when we come alive to that relationship with him, we are secure in who we are. We are confident, not selflessly in a selfish way. But we're confident. I'm not going to fall apart because of what someone else says to me. I know who I am to him. We're resilient because we have hope. I don't just have to rely on my mere optimism. You know, there were times in the pandemic where someone would say, look on the bright side, and I'd say, no, I can't. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. I need hope to live this. And then I know, when I know who I am and you know who you are, then we have a mission in life. Then we're not just existing. We're not just getting through the week. We're not just living for the next fleeting thing. We're on mission. Like our next breath is a gift. Our one life is a gift. So it's my hope 
that this gift of faith that's in you, you have it. You know him. That you would seek to know him more. To let yourself be known by him. And to live your faith to the full. And whether tomorrow be filled with good or ill, doesn't matter. We'll triumph through it all because he's with us. Our response you stand to with me now as we present these petitions. Our response to our prayers is Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for our parents and families who have sacrificed to send us to Hill Murray and who have walked with us throughout our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for our school administrators, teachers, and staff members who have supported us through our high school years. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the homeless and the poor in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the refugees fleeing in Ukraine and peace throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray that God blesses and guides our new graduates this summer and throughout their future lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of faith, relationship with Jesus, where we know ourselves and we are free to live life to the full, to live our life as mission. We ask that you would deepen our faith, strengthen it, help it to come alive through the gift of the Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore now and for ages unending with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out, as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Paul II, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of his family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are, pre who are pleasing to you, and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only you say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Blood of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of his dew. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated now for the graduation ceremony. I cannot tell you how wonderful it is to see our community gathered in this way. So many familiar faces, parents, grandparents, friends, faculty, staff, former faculty, and it's all to celebrate you, students. The class of 2022 are soon to be alumni. As you watch the procession this evening, you may have noticed that the parents, there were parents, staff, grandparents, who proudly were wearing green and white alumni cords. What does this mean? These graduates of Hill High School, Archbishop Murray Memorial, and Hill Murray really demonstrate that tradition never graduates. And the legacy of the Hill Murray community lives on throughout generations of pioneers. And I know there are siblings, aunts, uncles, and cousins seated throughout the cathedral today who are proud alumni as well. So it's at this time I would like all of our alumni parents, grandparents, staff, and any other guests today who are alums to please stand to be recognized by our community. So seniors, well, graduates, uh, this is your community, and it does not end here, as you can see. Not just now, but for forever. I want you to know how proud we are of you, how much we care about each of you. And as you go out into the world, know that we will always have your back. Hill Murray will always be your home. Never lose faith, never lose hope, and know that God is with you always. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for teaching all of us here tonight what it really means to be a pioneer. And now, speaking of two incredible pioneers, I am pleased to welcome two seniors, Carolyn Given and Jack Nelson, to offer some graduation remarks. You can come up now. So Caroline is probably one of the kindest and hardest working young women I know, and she will be attending the University of Missouri, Columbia, accepted into the School of Journalism. And Jack, Jack is going to be a freshman at Notre Dame, and uh, I think majoring in biology. And whether it's in the classroom or on stage or the way he is with his friends, he continues to amaze me. The human heart contains four chambers. Circulation begins in the right atrium and continues into the right ventricle and into the pulmonary artery to be oxygenated by the lungs. This process occurs with the help of other vessels, valves, or ventricles, assisting one another to reach the common goal of allowing the body to function properly. Both the heart and Hill Murray have four aspects to them. The four chambers in the heart and the four years of high school being a student at Hill Murray for six years now, I have come to believe that the exact same process is used within those Catholic walls. To begin our journey, the right atrium is where all circulation initiates. Relating to a high school standpoint, this chamber is the initial experiences and beginnings one encounters at Hill Murray. Commuting to Mounts Park Academy daily when I was younger, something constantly caught my eye when passing Hill Murray. This was the all guests welcome as Christ sign on the front lawn. 
You know, I never really understood this statement until I finally made the transition between schools at just age 13. Within moments, I recognized this statement was true. With the assistance of teachers, peers, coaches, and Jesus Christ, all of us students have been able to grow into strong and educated young adults who can face most any challenge life tosses at us. During freshman year of high school, we all had complicated times discovering who we were and who we wanted to be in the future. Lost within the realm of social media, comparing ourselves to others, and just finding the right people to spend time with, we can become lost. I'm sure all of us can relate to these challenges. But a simple smile or hello from teachers like Ms. Hutchinson, Ms. Barbato, and Ms. Bartell always seem to make my day a little bit brighter. Hill Murray allows staff and students to be acquainted in the heart of God, and it is fabulously exhibited each day. From the right atrium, the blood moves to the right ventricle. The right ventricle allows blood to be carried to the lungs to be oxygenated. Extracurricular activities and amusing events are what breathes life into a pioneer. Being a member of the student council, we created events in which a student could fully be absorbed with their peers. We have also experienced a great amount of success as well as a student body. For example, winning a state hockey tournament, both Alpine teams advancing to the state meet for the first time in history, qualifying for nationals in DECA, and so much more. This flow all runs through the heart of God. With the support of friends, teammates, and others, none of these occurrences would have even been imaginable. When each student brings their talents, hobbies, and passions to school each day, it creates a strong, diverse, and beneficial environment for each pioneer to thrive in. Moving on, the left atrium holds oxygen-rich blood that is being stored before traveling into the left ventricle. This chamber holds the morals on what it means to truly be a pioneer. This includes the process of developing in a Catholic environment, being inclusive, and loving everyone as yourself. Growing up is incredibly chaotic and challenging, to say the least. For example, difficult tests, finding friends, and just discovering who you would like to be in general. In addition, we all suffered through the harsh battle between being a teenager and overcoming the COVID-19 epidemic. This clot in our timeline as high schoolers allowed us to be resilient and never take anything for granted. As teenagers, we try to take on the world ourselves and believe we know everything. But if high school has taught me anything, that is that there is a whole world of knowledge out there waiting for each and every one of us. We just have to reach out and grab a hold of it. Although all of us fought our own personal battles during these past four years of school, we now come together as one and lift each other up as we take this next step. And finally, the left ventricle is the most important chamber in the heart, pushing blood all throughout the body. This can represent us escaping from our history and moving forward throughout our lives. We have become independent, educated, and prepared for the future in these past four years. With our Hill Murray education, we students are prepared to face the challenges and achieve the finest successes at the highest level of maturity. The class of 2022 is not only ready for the future, but we are humble, passionate, and eager to learn more about ourselves and what God has in store for us. Our diplomas represent one colossal yearbook. They hold memories, lessons, and friendships each of us will grasp for a lifetime. A common phrase in the given household is follow your heart, but take your brain with you. With the Lord in our hearts and the wisdom we now hold, we are built to succeed. Just like the human heart using deoxygenated blood and veins and developing it into oxygenated arteries, we have to be constantly open to change in our futures. In simpler terms, be flexible. Take that next step forward seize every opportunity, and learn something new every day. Now it is time for us to gather all of the tools, memories, and experiences we have acquired over these past four years to store them in our hearts and help assist us throughout the rest of our lives. We will face many, many obstacles, but we are more than prepared for them. Let's do this, Class of 2022.
Seniors, as we gather here today for our graduation, I hope that we have all taken a chance to walk down memory lane at Hill Murray. When I took my own walk down memory lane, I performed a little thought experiment. I asked myself a hypothetical question. What would I go back and tell freshman year me about what we have learned over our four years at Hill Murray? I thought sequentially. Freshman year, we learned that high school is a whole new ballpark. We had to start balancing more than before. Social and academic life, friends and relationship, and public image and personal self. Trying to find the balance between each of these new facets in life is not an easy task. Many of us learned that sometimes working with best friends on a school project might not be the smartest idea. I'm looking at you, Rube Goldberg. But by the end of the year, most of us had found our balance and niche of where we would spend the next three years of high school. We learned when is it, it is acceptable to have fun with friends, or when we need to study, or how to deal with the fallout from the latest friend group drama. As our freshman year drew to a close, we collectively learned one thing, balance. And then sophomore year, the year that arguably was and still is the most memorable year of our time here. For the first half of the year, we learned to balance even more, from harder classwork to our newfound driver's license. Whether it was driving to our friend's house on a Friday night or grinding out the mitochondria section in our bedrooms at one in the morning to finish our cell projects, we felt that we had finally figured it all out. And then March of 2020 hit. Our world quite literally got put on pause. None of us knew what to expect. What our days looked like quickly changed. Instead of chatting with our pods, we were working in breakout groups on Zoom. Instead of listening to our teacher's lectures, we were doing ed puzzles. Instead of being at school with friends, we were at home with family. Despite all the negativity in the world, we still managed to stay connected to one another. We FaceTimed our friends to talk about Tiger King or Outer Banks. We had drive-by birthday parties to wave hi to friends in our cars. We took walks outside, but maintained our six feet of social distancing. Even in a world of distance, we managed to grow closer together. As the end of our sophomore year came to a virtual close, we collectively learned one thing, adaptability. When we came back for the start of junior year, the world as we knew it was completely different. We were all wearing masks, we had to eat lunch in our classrooms, and at any time, the nurse could make the dreaded phone call to your teacher saying that you had to quarantine. On top of all that, we had a whole new slew of things to balance. We were finally taking CIS and AP classes, starting the search for colleges, and prepping for the ACT. With how our sophomore year went, we knew that anything could change at a moment's notice, and we all hoped for any sense of predictability that we could. But alas, things necessarily didn't work out that way. Some of us struggled with classes, others with social life. Some of us struggled with the unplanned switching of teachers, others with trying to build the college resume. Meanwhile, we all struggled with the unknown of what college or career we wanted to pursue. We never knew what challenges we would be faced with next. Yet, we began to trust ourselves, knowing everything would turn out okay in the end. Even in the chaos of our junior year, we collectively learned one thing, confidence. Finally, coming back for senior year, our lives started to look quasi-normal. School was still hard, relationships were still tough, but we finally had Friday night lights back for football season. As we all started to create our common app accounts and write our college essays and every single supplementary essay that came with that, the reality of what was happening finally set in. We were going to be moving on. As Ms. Stormont would say, us baby birds were going to leave the nest and fly. Our days quickly became numbered and all of our big lasts happened. The last game, the last performance, the last hockey section final game against White Bear Lake and subsequent state hockey tournament, the last test, the last paper, the last prom, the last mass, the last day. All that we have dreamed of for the past four years finally came to a close. So, as our senior year draws to a close, I hope we collectively have learned two things, gratitude and closure. With all of the things that we have learned over our four years, balance, adaptability, confidence, gratitude, and closure, I think there is only one word that can perfectly describe us, resilient. 
Despite all the twists and turns and unforeseen circumstances during our high school experience, we have learned to quickly make the best of a situation. But we didn't do it alone. We had each other. We had our Hill Murray family. If I had to go back and tell freshman year Jack Nelson what his four years at Hill Murray would be like, he would probably ask when this new dystopian movie was coming out. Our high school career has been anything but normal. Alas, here we are, finally at the end of the road. Now we, the class of 2022, are going in all different directions and moving on to the next chapters of our lives. We are going to meet our new friends wherever we will go, but we will always have our Hill Murray family. And here's one truth I know. No matter how far apart or how long between seeing each other, we will stay family. We will stay pioneers. We will stay the class of 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Jack and Caroline. Before I present this year's candidates for diplomas, we would first like to recognize the winners of our Founders Awards. Each year, we are proud to award the Lasallian Award to one young man and the Benedictine Award to one young woman who best exemplify the values we hold dear as a school, values that are rooted in our spiritual and foundational heritage. The Benedictine Award honors the Sisters of St. Benedict of St. Paul's Monastery, who founded Archbishop Murray Memorial High School in 1958. Their purpose was to provide a Catholic education for girls living on the east side of St. Paul. The Lasallian Award honors the Christian Brothers, a teaching order founded by St. John Baptist de Lasalle. The Christian Brothers opened Hill High School in 1959 for boys. Together, the schools provided a strong foundation for Catholic education on the east side of St. Paul. When the two schools merged to become Hillmary High School in 1971, both charisms of the founding religious orders were embraced. The Founders Awards bring focus to who we are and what we stand for as a school. These distinguished awards are presented to one young man and one young woman in the graduating class who have best demonstrated evidence of recognizing and reflecting God's presence in the world, showing hospitality to others, and answering the gospel call to serve God and one another. We are very pleased to announce that our 2022 Benedictine Award winner is Ms. Mayowa Sukuru. And we are also very pleased to announce that our 2022 LaSallian Award winner is Mr. Cormac O'Connor. Congratulations, Mayowa and Cormac. Father Williams, Father DiGennaro, Mrs. Dan, members of the Hillmary Foundation Board and Board of Trustees, distinguished facul faculty, parents, grandparents, friends, alumni, and members of the class of 2022. I can attest that each of these students has completed the required course of study to receive a Hillmary diploma. In keeping with the dignity of this event, and in respect to each graduate, I ask you to please hold your applause until all of our graduates have been recognized and returned to their seats. 
Graduates, after you receive your diploma, you will walk straight back through the gates where a photographer will be waiting to take your picture and a staff member will direct you back to your seat. Abdul Rahman Abara. Taylor Garnett Anderson. Ike Chuku David Anuke. Anthony Banderas Infante. Grace Adele Baumgartner. Axel Joseph Begley. Samuel Stanley Beldy. Samantha Rose Beaver. Lucy Ann Blissenbach. Rachel Rebecca Bolin. Brendan Hughes Bannon. Olivia Margaret Boyer. Aiden Matson Braun. Grant Tyson Bungie. William San Chastic. Jack Joseph Kologi. Nolan Brian Connors. Mackenzie Marie Conway. Doran Faith Cooper. Rocco Anthony Carella. Brendan James Daly. Edmund George DeRosa. Tate Avery Davies.
Kenneth Earl Davis, Jr. Owen Michael Denzio. Alexander David Dujinski. Jared Duran Castro. Sutton Elizabeth Ellis. Anthony Clinton Enthot. Mario Renato Esteb. Kirsten Rose Fiesel. Tyler John Fishback. Sean Patrick Flaherty. Caitlin Rose Flanagan. Samuel Gerard Sargent Fox. Saru William Francis. Alejandra Holly Franco. Brett Anthony Frank. Mariana Lou Gabriel. Avery Christine Gaylor. Dahlia Ann Gallagher. Jack Thomas Garvey. Caroline Grace Given. Dylan Thomas Godbout. Kieran Regavir Gore. Leo Edward Gruba. Hi, 
Nathan David Hardy. Bennett Arthur Harris. Luke Ron Housey. Logan Carl Hedrick. Adam John Haney, Jr. Riley Ann Herman. Lucas Gerald Heyer. Harrison David Hurth. Gianni Vincent Hurley. Tiago Eduardo Jaime. Lindsay Blackwell Johnson. Adam Randall Jones. Amelia May Jones. Reagan Elise Joseph. Benjamin Joseph Carr. Madeline Jennifer Kaufman. Kristen Marie Kaufman. Marcus Ryan Kaufman. Henry Daniil Kilcoin. Olivia Lauren Klepak. Andrew John Koch. Joseph Matthew Koch. Karenna Grace Kreis. Okay. 
Zachary Thomas LeBeau. Elizabeth Mary Lefebvre. Connor Wayne Lashinger. Grace Helen Levine. Madeline Isabel Lear. Malcolm Lloyd Lenz. Olivia Rose Lindell. May Marguerite Lindemer. Michael Frederick Lowe. Claire Elise Lozano. Ryan Edward Lindeen. Anthony Michael Madigan. Alexander Robert McDaniel. Owen Rikus McDonald. Connor Michael McElmory. Elizabeth Sophia McGill. Delaney Marie McGrath. Michelle Marie McGrath. Rashad Gabriel McKinley. Ali Joe Meese. Stephanie Jane Melby. McKenna Marie Mikla.
Caitlin Linnell Mitchell. Catherine Aveas Mogren. Charles Gerard Moore. Jamie Christopher Montague. Avery Jacqueline Mord. Alexia Jagger Rudit Morris. Ashley Marie Myers. Isabel Pearl Nachsheim. John Ryan Nelson. Ella Cole Netlin. Calvin Huang Wen. Maxwell Gianni Nicholson. Andrew Joseph Nimes. Cormac Sean O'Connor. Ashlyn Alice O'Malley. Donovan Terrence O'Malley. <clears throat> Elise Marie O'Neill. Lauren Elizabeth Overly. Luciana Antoinette Obermuller. Joshua Elliot Ogren. Cecilia Rose Olson. Lee Charles Olson. Lillian Grace Olson. Vincent John. Obert Peterson.
Patrick Thomas Phelan. Hannah Marie Poppy. Salvatore Joseph Primoli. Lexi Ann Quinlan. Adam Russell Rausch. Kylie Ann Reardon. Edward Gordon Reese. Chase Daniel Roach. Yanis Aureli Rodriguez. Olivia Marie Rose. Evan Finley Ross. Philip Andrew Rother. Ella Marie Runyon. Mason Lillian Rimo. Ryan Timothy Schabert. Anna Isabel Schaffhauser. Grace Elizabeth Schaffhauser. Jack William Schenecker. Jack Thomas Senden. Stephanie Marie Ship Alua Maioa Isat Sikiru.
William Lafayette Simpson III. Colin Richard Skellinger. Anders James Sletton. Abigail Viviana Smith. Charles Thomas Stinson. Carla Monica Sykes. Wyatt Edward Talents. Anna Morgan Throne. Noah Thomas Urbanski. Eliana Olivia Uremovich. Owen Joseph Varley. Victoria Marie Veneman. Hannah Grace Venevitz. Matthew Benjamin Waldock. Emma Elizabeth Walrick. Morgan Kathleen Weaver. Charles Lewis Welsh. Caroline Catherine Wicks. Alexandra Felicia Weedy. Andrew George Weissner.
Robert Kaala Wong. Amelia Lucille Wren. Riley Ronald Wright. Anthony Alexander Yoakum the Sixth Joshua Paul Yoakum I'm going to ask you to hold your applause for just a couple minutes to let all of our graduates get back to their seats.
Graduates, please stand. I am very proud to present to you the Hill Murray class of 2022. I would like to share a special, tra a special tradition um, as we close and right before Father Williams blesses our graduates. So our students entered this beautiful cathedral accompanied by their parents and they will soon exit alone. But with strength, with confidence, through an honor guard of teachers who believe in them, who love them, Graduating parents, I ask that you remain in your pews as your children are ushered out for the final exit, giving them a chance to revel in their final farewell to Hill Murray. And now, Father Williams and Father Paolo, I ask for your final blessing on the Hill Murray class of 2022. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace.